Go ahead. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Coach Mike from the Recovery Lab. I'm here with my good friend, Faze Sensei. What's up guys? And we are working on some shoulder stuff today. So he's here with us for, you know, for, until September where he's gonna train for his next Spartan race. Um, but, you know, during our evaluation, we kind of found a few things that we wanna work on, specifically with his left shoulder. So for those of you who may not know, about this cat right here, you know, he was a martial arts instructor for many years, still is, uh, very, very into fitness. So what we're gonna talk about is one of the adaptations that his body has made because of those years and years of training in a very specific way. So what I mean by that is that he spent years closing off and being nice and tight, right? Yep, just like that. So his body has adapted to this position, right? Chin down, head forward, shoulders forward, right? So that adaptation, has caused him to have some movement and postural dysfunctions over time that are kind of giving him a little bit of trouble now. So in the training, obviously, we're trying to mitigate that as best as we can, but also, you know, make him move and feel a little bit better. So, you know, kind of the textbook definition of what we're talking about is upper cross syndrome. And that's a, a Yanda term. It's been around for a long time. But um, what upper cross syndrome is, is a combination of two things forward head posture and forward shoulder posture, right? So we see this a lot. Obviously the fighting community for sure, you fighters out there definitely are gonna fall in that category, but also, you know, your weekend warriors or people who are working those nine to five jobs at a computer, think about the amount of time you spend in this position, right? So what we talked about last time, our bodies are adaptation machines. And if that's the position you're gonna spend a majority of your time in, that's what your body's going to adapt to and make you the most efficient at being in this position. So obviously for certain sports, that's okay. For, for Sensei here, it's definitely okay, but we wanna obviously help him you know, work around some of these uh, painful injuries that he's had over the years. So uh, if you don't mind, we're gonna spin you around. I'm gonna show the folks here what we're working on. So if you guys remember, we talked about Graston technique a few weeks ago. We actually popped this shirt off for me if you don't mind. Right, so Graston Technique is a review for those of you who may not have seen the first video. You know, it's instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. What that means is basically I'm gonna use these stainless steel instruments to, for him, break down some scar tissue, open up some length in that, in that muscle fiber and those fascial layers so that his body is a little bit more apt to accommodate a more neutral posture position in the future. So again, the kind of the hallmarks of upper cross syndrome are gonna be a really over tight pec, right? Uh, pec or anterior um, um, line muscles, as well as his upper trap. So those two muscles in combination are gonna internally, rot internally rotate his shoulders and bring his head and, uh, and his shoulders forward. So I like to use cocoa butter, Palmer's cocoa butter is probably one of the best things you can do for a grass and technique treatment. They do make their own emollient which you can reuse as well, it's fine. So we're just gonna kind of apply semi-liberally in this area. You know, in this area that we're really gonna concentrate with, with Sensei today is, is kind of this border of his, of, his, of his scapula or his shoulder blade, right? So you, if you see my finger, it kind of traces like a triangle. And right at the notch of that triangle is where his upper trap, his levator scapula, a lot of these muscles are kind of sharing that attachment point. Right? We call this points of convergence, where lots of anatomical structures are sharing that attachment point. And when they're competing in opposite directions and they're pulling in opposite directions, what they leave here is kind of a wake of soft tissue destruction. So, you know, Sensei here has got a bunch of scar tissue kind of like loaded up here. And even when he goes to try to actively retract his shoulder blades, he gets a lot of clicking and popping. Um, and it's just uncomfortable for him. It's not necessarily painful, but I mean, I can even feel that right now. Like, Honestly, if you get close enough, you might even be able to hear it. It's kind of disgusting. But um, so what we're gonna do today is, again, we're gonna show you what, what grass and technique's all about. So I'm gonna put, put him in a, a neutral position. To start, I'm gonna have him turn his head away, right, and just rotate slightly down. So I like to start this treatment by just kind of gently maintaining contact with the skin. We're gonna, you know, obviously it's kind of more annoying than painful. You know, I'm not gonna go super deep. This is his first grass and treatment today. And immediately right off the bat guys what you see here is reddening of the skin that is blood flow so when I talk about chronic soft tissue injuries like tendonitis and things like that that's why Graston is really so powerful because it really brings that local blood flow to the table straight away and it kind of really helps you know enrich that area so the healing process can maintain so really I'm just kind of warming him up 
getting him used to the feeling of that instrument. And what I'm gonna do in a second is kind of switch up my, my tools here and kind of be a little bit more focused. All right, so sit up nice and tall here, big, big chest, shoulders back, nice and soft. Right, so when that muscle is on a shortened position, I can access those deeper layers and you can actually see how well that tool can kind of really kind of get in there. And I can feel that very, very easily with the tool. It's actually resonating through the steel to my fingertips, so it allows me to kind of sense where those adhesions are. Okay, and I'll look at this one. I'm gonna try to relax that just down back, just kind of let it hang a little bit more forward. There you go, right in that spot. So here I am using this convex tool now, right? So this is gonna have a little bit smaller of a treatment edge and now I can kind of get in there a little bit deeper and he's gonna to start to feel me kind of breaking this scar tissue down a little bit. Right there, that, and I can actually feel that clicking and popping underneath the instrument. You know, so the advantage of this here, and again, there are some kind of misconceptions of grassing technique that, you know, it's gonna leave these big, big deep bruises and lots of, you know, discoloration. Um, that's not my intention today. My intention today is obviously to assess this soft tissue quality first and foremost. And second, what we're doing is really trying to remodel that scar tissue. It's in place. The scar tissue is, is there because of an injury that he's sustained years ago. And, you know, that's your body's way of kind of filling in that gap. So the, the problem with that is, is that scar tissue kind of goes along the terms of like survival mode. So your body's just spitting down connective tissue in any which direction just to fill in that hole. So I like to use the metaphor of like potholes on the road, right? You just fill it in as quickly as you can just so you're not, you know, making more damage, right? So that's essentially what's happened here. So instead of all those muscle fibers, right, lining up in parallel, what he's got now essentially is kind of a tangled web of, of scar tissue or connective tissue. And that's really not efficient. So over the course of the treatments, you know, in the next few weeks, my goal is to kind of help remodel that scar tissue so that those fibers are lined up in parallel, right? So just like anything else, whether it's training, rehab, what have you, I'm, I'm providing a stress to his system and his system's going to have to adapt to that stress over time. So I'm gonna just change his arm position here, kind of bring that forward a little bit more. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually gonna put this muscle on a stretch, work these more superficial layers. Now he's really gonna to start to feel you know, me cracking and popping over that scar tissue there. And that is pretty nasty. How's, how you feeling there, Sensei, okay? Is this killing you? Almost. Almost, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not, again, you know, I'm not tickling them with a paintbrush here, guys. It's yeah, a stainless yeah. steel instrument. So, you know, again, it, this doesn't have any give, whereas my hands would have a little bit of give. So, you know, this is on the more aggressive end of the spectrum in terms of soft tissue treatments. I would really only do this type of treatment with him maybe once this week because it's his first time, and uh, maybe twice next week or the week after, but really once or twice a week max. You know, there's only really so much, you know, especially your skin can tolerate, you know, with this kind of treatment. So again, we don't want to overload him and leave him sore and cranky. We kind of just want him to leave here. He might feel a little bit bruised up in that area, but it should feel a whole lot better to move. And that's obviously our goal is to help him move more efficiently as he gets ready for the Spartan race. Right in there, that's pretty nasty too. So again, if you guys have any questions at all about, you know, what I'm doing right now, or even, you know, other applications for grass, then please, you know, shoot us a line, send us a message. We'd be happy to address your specific questions. But again, this is probably in the 10 years I've been an athletic trainer, this is probably the single most effective soft tissue modality that I've come across. I know, you know, I use a lot of active release techniques as well. Very, very effective. But in situa situations like this, where you've got a lot of local kind of scar tissue in that area, the Graston has really kind of shown itself to be one of the more effective uh, intervention methods that's out there right now. You know, and if you, Dan, if you get a little closer here, you can start to see you know, some of these little blood blisters that are forming in his skin, that's kind of telling me that I've almost reached the end of toleration for what his skin can kind of handle. And the funny thing is actually a little bit of history about Graston. It's actually, you know, developed from a very traditional Eastern technique called Gua Sha, which was essentially thousands of years ago, you know, um, we would take ox horns and scrape the skin, deep, deep scraping to kind of form those blood blisters. And really what they believed was that they were portals through which evil spirits could leave your body. So obviously we're not releasing any evil spirits on Sensei today, but 
you know, it's always kind of cool to see like where the modern tool, the modern technique kind of comes from. And this is very, very deeply rooted in, in traditional Eastern medicine. So if you guys have any, any specific questions about Graston or you're interested in getting trained in Graston Technique, you can check out their website, www.grastontechnique.com. Um, I've been doing it for about six years now, and like I said, it's definitely very, very effective. So right now I'm just kind of doing some trigger point massage, you know, anything that I may have missed with the grass, and I'm just kind of going to come around here now with my fingers and, and work on those little knots and trigger points, just because obviously his skin can tolerate this a little bit better now. All right, just sit up, big, big, big chest for me. Okay, good. How you doing there, okay? You sweating yet? <laughs> Almost. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. The other thing you can see, too, if you, if you get in nice and close, is as I'm releasing these trigger points, you can actually see the muscles around this area start to twitch and, and contract a little bit. And really what that is is a, an, a, a subconscious response for the muscle you know, when you're on that trigger point, right, it's a kind of a bump, just think about like a, an exposed nerve, like all bundled up and nasty. You know, that's kind of the response that his body the, it tells me that I've gotten a good release out of it. So that's kind of what I'm looking for, you know, as I work through this area. Again, guys, any questions at all, please feel free to, to let us know. All right, so now we're going to move on to a little bit more of an ART technique, right? So now we're going to, Sensei and I are going to work as a team. So what I'm going to ask him to do is sit up nice and tall. He's going to rotate his head to the right and then chin to chest, right? Placing that muscle on a stretch. As he does that, I'm going to time it so that we're, I'm starting here. We're going to reach that corner at the same time, right? So you're going to rotate your head and down as at the same pace that I'm working down there. Got it. Make sense? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and rotate and then chin to chest. I'm just gonna hold that pressure and I'm gonna let him glide that muscle underneath there, right there. Hold and relax. Back to the top. Again. And down. Good. Excellent. A couple more times. Good. One couple more. How's that feel, okay? A little bit better than the grass in bit, I bet. A little bit better. Nice. Good. Relax. Good. So already, even just after one treatment, I'm feeling a significant reduction in some of that crunchiness that he's gotten here. Go ahead and try to move that shoulder back. It's probably still going to pop, but maybe you'll notice that it's not quite as severe yeah. this time, okay? So, as soon as you let go, I can feel a difference. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, again, the reason I like these soft tissue techniques is I can show him a result right away. And that's what we're looking for, results, right? So, you know, does this take more time to do? Does this take more of my time with Sensei here to get that result? Yes, but it's worth it because, you know, you, there's no machine that you're just going to stick on here and it's yeah. going gonna, gonna to heal you. You know, your body knows what to do. We're just trying to optimize what his body's going to naturally do. So, again, I'm just supplying the stress in a very specific way, and his body's going to make the adaptation to that stress to kind of heal and remodel that scar tissue to be a little bit more supple, a little bit more, um, you know, in line for the future. So this is obviously a work in progress. We've done one treatment here. Since I'm gonna have you lay on your back, I just wanna kind of show the complete treatment for like an upper cross. So really, you know, treating the upper trap is one thing, which is great. That's really not the whole story because he does get a lot of pull from his chest, right? His pec minor, subclavius, his pec major. These are all big, you know, um, shoulder stabilizers. Those deeper muscles are obviously going to stabilize his scapula on his skeleton. And then obviously the pec major, the lat, these bigger gross motor movers, these are the ones that are going to kind of keep him internally rotated. So I'm just going to work on his pec a little bit. Maybe we'll do a little bit of grassing, but not much. And the advantage of the stabilizer is to let that drop down. So again, we're going to start with just some, you know, ART or active release therapy or, you know, myofascial release, whatever you want to call it. Um, but essentially what I'm going to do is put him through a movement and then I'm just going to allow my fingers to kind of sink in and glide along there. Same thing, if you get it nice and close here, you can kind of see that, that response that I get where little, the muscles in here start twitching and I know I'm getting a good release at that point. You know, if you guys don't have a clinician in your area, uh, GrastonTechnique.com does have a locator provider page. You can 
throw your zip code in there and find that soft tissue guru in your area that maybe can help you with some similar issues. You definitely want to get somebody who's got an affinity to do this kind of soft tissue work. It does take a little bit more time. It's not particularly comfortable, but if you're looking for results, this is how you get them. You know, so this com you know, uh, combined with the right type of training and the right corrective exercise, again, even the soft tissue work will only take you so far. You got to pair this with the right corrective exercise, which is built into Sensei's program here at AMP um, so that he's actually getting the most out of that correction by combining that soft tissue work with what he's going to do today in the, in the performance center. All right, so we're going to work that down the back. You feel that in the chest right there, chest wall. Now I'm going to work him into external rotation, right? So these fibers in his pec don't just, you know, they don't just bench press, folks. They, they line up in this direction that they actually internally rotate the shoulder as well. So I'm going to work in that opposite action into external rotation. We can get into our, you know, we can get into his rotator cuff, his subscap, all, all those different muscles that internally rotate the shoulder. We'll see what we get to today, but you know, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing him move a little bit better, a little bit more freely. Again, guys, it's a great time for questions. If you guys have anything that you're curious about or wondering why I'm doing what I'm doing or what the, the rationale behind it is, please. Feel free to send us a message, let us know. We'd be happy to answer it for you. You know, there's lots of different techniques and ways to go about this type of treatment. This is just what I found personally to be kind of the most effective. So again, I just kind of did a little ART work, a little bit of myofascial release right through that pec. Now I'm gonna just apply a little bit of that cocoa butter again, kind of less is more scenario. Just hold that arm for a second, Sensei. Let me just I've got a question, off. is that a warm up or a stretch? What's that? Everything yeah, you're doing. Oh, what we're doing. So, you know, a lot of times I like to start with my hands, you know, so he's already been warmed up. I actually used a moist heat pack on him prior to when we got on Periscope with you guys. But really what I'm doing is I'm actually tacking down this tissue, right? I'm applying this stress and I'm moving him through a range of motion. So to answer your question, it's kind of a little bit of both, right? So I'm using my hands to kind of create a little bit of blood flow first, warm this tissue up, get him used to some pressure, right? Obviously your body will respond by releasing some of its own natural painkillers, endorphins and things like that in response to this type of pressure. But really that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm kind of warming him up, I'm priming him to be ready for something a little bit more aggressive like the Graston, where again, I'm gonna put him in a shortened position and just kind of work through those fibers here. You know, and the other great thing, it's like, a, like we talked about a week ago, it's like a divining rod. So I can really feel some of these tissue adhesions, right? You feel that? It's like crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. You know what those are, are adhesions or restrictions in his fascial layers, right? So this just gives me an opportunity to kind of break those down a little bit, allow some local blood flow. Very good question. Thanks for that question. We appreciate it. Yeah, right. So now I'm going to actually put him on a more stretch position. I'll read this up a little bit. Put him on a more stretch position. So now again, I'm getting, I'm accessing those superficial layers now. And when I started doing this treatment, I, I was using even like a butter knife or a spoon handle, <laughs> you know, that's kind of how I got my feet wet with this kind of treatment before I went, went out and got uh, certified and spent the money on, on the actual instruments, which they're fantastic, by the way. They definitely save my hands a beating, but for, they're very, very effective. So now he's on a little bit of a stretch even more of a stretch now and I'm just support that shoulder. It's an unstable position. And I'm going to treat in both directions, right? So I'm working up along those fibers. I'm feeling a little bit more resistance there, but I also treat down, you know, so that's, it's also kind of one of the tactics you can use with this grass and is where you feel more resistance or more of that gravelly crunchy type of feeling. That's the direction you want to treat in because you're going to release a little bit more of that tissue there. Right. It's a little sensitive there. Okay. okay, one more, we're gonna reach up, just grab onto the table right there. Last thing I'm gonna work on with him today, again, normally I'd go deep into his subscap here and, and kind of really get into his rotator cuff. Sensei was kind enough to let us do this periscope with him today, so I don't wanna crush him, you know, on live TV. So, <laughs> yeah. so what we're gonna do is I'm I just can, gonna I work. I would feel that. 
<laughs> I can tell you did that. Yeah, this is again, this is a sensitive area, guys. So you know, he's a tough dude. Trust me, I'm not gonna tangle with him anytime soon. But uh, you know, again, this is sensitive area, so I'm just gonna kind of warm this area up with my hand first. Work on his tricep insertions. But really, what I'm treating here is his lat. You know, his lat's another big shoulder extensor. It's a big internal rotator. You know, so when you do a lot of that lat pull down, you're working your lats a lot. What's gonna end up happening is you're gonna set your normal to be a little bit more internally rotated, right? So again, we're talking about length tension relationships in our body. You know, this is what his body's adapted to from, from years of kind of closing himself off to protect himself from strikes. You know, now he's here. So when he's trying to deadlift and do different positions where he needs to be, you know, shoulders down and back or big chest, he has a hard time getting there because his soft tissues are uh, set up in such a way that it's not really kind of his normal yet. Obviously, we're working on that. He's definitely going to be feeling a little bit better. For his deadlift day today, for sure. How's that in there? Pretty nasty too, huh? Yeah. So again, I've chosen a, a convex tool here now. So again, I'm getting more. So really just selecting the tool that's going to give me the most kind of contact or that's going to contour the best with, you know, the area that I'm working on. Um, you know, there's definitely, there's six different instruments you can use or, or choose from, all di different edges and contours. So this is just the one right now that's seemed to kind of fit his body the best right in this position. Okay, so we're gonna go a little bit more now, just kind of let that let that hang right there. Yeah, that's pretty oh, nice. Oh, oh. So right in here is kind of this is your subscap, right? Subscap is a big internal rotator. Again, if it's super super tight from being internally rotated all the time, a little bit of subscap release. Again, very sensitive area. I'm I'm like knuckles deep in his armpit right now, but. <laughs> Um, you can feel even a little bit of crunching in there, oh, yeah. you know, for sure. Ooh. It's a very awkward feeling, too. Yeah, right? How many times has a guy been <laughs> fingers deep in your armpit before? Probably this is a first for both of us. Well, actually, not for me. I do it all the time. Ooh. You feel that right there, right? Yeah. Pretty nasty. So I might even come in here with, you know, this is GT3. This is just one treatment edge here on the outside. It's a very small treatment edge. Um, but, again, perfect for little areas like this. So I can kind of get right up in there. Again, any questions, you guys, feel free to shout us out. We're happy to answer them. You know, obviously, I'm always going to be asking him, how are you feeling? Do you need a break? This is aggressive stuff here. This is not oh, oh, for the faint of heart, you know. If you're looking for a rub down, just, you know, go to your massage, you know, parlor in town. But if you're Ooh. looking for results, you got to definitely be a little bit more aggressive. Come on, Sensei. Hold it together, bro. <laughs> The ice cream with a knife. Oh, this is. Oh, I forgot to use the goblets. It is a knife. No, I'm kidding. It's 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 a treatment tool. This is a you know Ooh. medical instrument, precisionly engineered. Okay, why don't you go ahead and sit up for me, and I'm going to show you guys right now the instant result. Ooh. So just go ahead and spin spin around. So you're just okay. sitting up normal. Actually, maybe just stand up for us. Stand up. Sensei, you got a question? Is he strong? He is. Yes. <laughs> right spot. Oh, I got I got those uh, Mr. Miyagi fingers. Yes. Okay. So even if you look, so turn around for us so people can see your back. Okay, you can even see right from here how much further down and back this left shoulder is now sitting. Like look where my, that's the apex of his scapula on this side, and that's the apex of his scapula on this side. So, you know, even in one treatment, I'm able to see the difference. Go ahead and turn around for us, face the camera. Stand normal. Again, you can kind of see a little bit of the redness in that, in that finger, but look. Notice that his right thumb is kind of turned towards the inside, mm -hmm. right? It's internally rotated yeah, here. Too. Look at this thumb. It's more towards neutral, right? More towards facing forward where we want to, where we want to go. Uh, what do they want? What's the question? How much does this session cost? So, you know, again, it really depends on uh, clinician to clinician. Here in the Amp Recovery Lab, we do a subscription. It's actually a membership, like similar to maybe like a Massage Envy. So actually the Graston's included in that. So you know, I'll, I'll make the assessment on, you know, what this athlete in particular needs. And if Graston is part of that, then that's what we're going to do. Um, a typical session, you know, for a half hour, you're probably looking at anywhere between, 
50 and 65 dollars i would say is about the average um, a single session at amp is about 65 dollars but with the subscription you know if you if you pay on a monthly basis it actually uh, bumps down to about forty dollars a session or one sixty a month if you're training with us as well. So you know we definitely have a lot of different recovery lab packages that offer manual therapy is obviously a staple with us. But you know for a specific for one Graston treatment here and there, like I said, you're probably looking at between fifty and seventy dollars on average for a half hour session. Half hour is really all you need. You know an hour of this stuff will leave you sore, uh, sore as hell. So um, you know. That's a, thanks for the question again, appreciate it. Um, all right guys, that's pretty much it for today. We're gonna go beat him up in the gym for a little bit and uh, you know we'll probably get back with you guys soon. But I just want to you know, thank my friend here, Faze Sensei, for coming down and, and letting us uh, shoot this video together. Yeah. Again, this is Mike from the Amp Recovery Lab. If you guys aren't following us on our, on our Twitter or our Instagram handles, please do so at amp underscore athlete or on Facebook at Athletic Movement Protocol. Um, you want to say anything to the fine folks out here? If they're not following Face Sensei, definitely do so. Yeah, definitely awesome. follow Face Sensei and Face Fitness. But I really appreciate you guys doing this. I've been having this injury for like five, six years now, um, but I can already feel a difference. Um, fixing my posture, I had no idea coming in here right. like, what the issues were. I've been asking a lot of questions, and they got an answer for everything. And I've been feeling better like every single second we're doing stuff. So, so right, really exactly. Good. So everything we're doing, we're doing it for a reason, you know. And he, you know, obviously he's got lofty goals in terms of fitness and you know his Spartan race coming up in September. So you know we're gonna do a few more of these uh, uh, Periscope videos, hopefully featuring uh, Sensei here. But you know, again, so these are the little things that for an elite athlete or an athlete that's been training for a long time. These are these little edges that they can use to kind of increase their performance tenfold. So again, our our motto in the recovery lab is prevent, restore, optimize. So you know, really, you know, he's had some injuries in the past, so we're restoring that mobility, that range of motion, that movement efficiency that he's lost from those injuries. Now we're at the step where we're kind of optimizing what his body can do by allowing him to you know, move effectively, but also, you know, use as little force as required to accommodate those movements, yeah. right? So that's what we're looking at right now. Again, this is kind of like just scratching the surface of things that we're gonna work with him. But again, posture is a big one, right? So we go back to our, our injury equation, right guys? is postural movement dysfunction plus repetitive stress equals these chronic, you know, overuse type injuries. So, you know, you could take away the repetitive stress all you want and just sit down and it's not gonna bother you, but as soon as you start moving around or training again, it's gonna be right back, right? Mm -hmm. So the real solution to this equation is to find out what that postural dysfunction is, right? Which is, which is for Sensei, kind of that forward shoulder position. We can actually start to optimize that now by allowing him a little bit more mobility in his, in his upper back and his shoulder. So again, thanks guys for coming out. Um, we appreciate it. If, any questions, please feel free to email us, athleticmovementprotocol at gmail.com. Uh, or if you're not in the newsletter, please go ahead and get on the website and uh, register for our newsletter as well. I'll send you all the notes, and uh, we appreciate you guys coming out. Thanks. Signing off.